bitch. <laughs> All right. God. I hate doing this. All right. So this week on Three Sides of the Coin, first off, I'm here. Mark was here a little bit. He disappeared. And boy, did he miss a good episode because I had many stories to share, stories that Mark would have loved. And maybe <laughs> you just have to stick around and listen. Let's just let's just say this is the hairy episode. It's a very hairy situation that I get myself into. Let's just, just stick around and listen. Oh, boy. This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. It's Three Sides of the Coin, and we're here. And you can hire us to say something on video for you. But, but before everybody like rolls their eyes and goes, what the hell am I hiring three sides for? We are donating 100% of the money we raise to charity, okay? So think about that when you want us to say something. We can do a birthday shout out, an anniversary shout out. Lisa can do like a Paul Stanley rap. Couldn't you, Lisa? Would you do that, please? I can sing Read My Body. I can do a Paul Stanley rap. Anything that you want to do, I'll do. Mark, well, not everything. Would, would, would you get up and go open something? No, but I'll <laughs> say something funny. <laughs> I'll read a comment. <laughs> yeah, Tommy will. Re- you can send Tommy a comment and he'll read it. Now, seriously, you guys all know what Cameo is all about. We'll do a video shout out for any occasion saying anything you want. You know, I don't know if we've even got any limits. You could you could have us say something like three sides of the coin sucks and we'll do mm-hmm. that. Well, I mean, does, we're, we're really easy here. So head over to cameo.com. Look for three sides of the coin. The four of us will get together and record a video message for you donating all of our money to charity. All right, mm-hmm. hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of three sides of the coin. All four of us are together this week i don't know why sometimes it just happens but and lisa is looking pretty lovely sitting out on her patio can only hope for a hummingbird making an appearance i wish i wish there's zero i can't maybe a squirrel will pop up or something but no hummingbird here sorry guys all right well so you got all four of us this week so you can cover three of us up and just watch lisa because she's looking beautiful in her tank top pirates you know the baseball team that sucks, but that's okay. Very so. milfy. It's the glass because I can't see shit. I'm tired of these people from other cities. Is you have you seen the Tigers record this year? No, no. it's terrible. It's I, I, can't be any worse than the Pirates. Did you see them lose to the whatever whoever they played? It was like thirty eight to two. I mean, it was just like they got their asses handed to them. Look, I'm in sports hell. Okay, you know say it. you're in Detroit. Everybody just loses. It's just <laughs> everything. The, the Pistons blow. The Lions blow. Uh, the only thing that's the Red Wings are rebuilding. Um, they're actually starting to get better. So which is all I care about because it's the NHL. But yeah, I mean, it's it's fucking sports hell here. I, I, I have not even been to a Tigers game this year and I love baseball. Um, I just I just can't go I, I want to i i just said to lizzie the other day so you know i'm probably just fucking just go anyway i don't care just i love going to the games but the, i mean they're like horrible i mean horrible and you have a nice stadium because when you have a nice stadium you know it's like going to pittsburgh pirate games everyone knows they suck but the stadium is so nice that it doesn't really matter you know it's the number one stadium in the mbl or ml mbl <laughs> And be, be. Uh, you know nobody cares that they suck because it's just so nice yeah I, I like going to comerica park it's it's nice it's funny because right now i'm literally working across the street from comerica park that's where my company's doing a pretty big job right now and it's just like you know i want to go I, I i you know like everything i do in life you know music sports but i'm very passionate about it and i i can tell like right now, like Miguel Cabrera is one of the greatest hitters in baseball history. But he said that they, they signed him to this insane fucking contract. He, he's a great singles hitter, but that's it. What are you paying somebody yeah. all that kind of money for? My whole point of that is this. 
if they don't care, why should I care? Yep. And that's the difference, like with the Red Wings. I mean, they're at least trying. Um, and and again, too, I, th- I think this year, I think the Lions will maybe be a little bit more improved. But again, you know, it, the franchise is the worst in all of sports. So, and I mean, all of sports. There's but nothing as bad know. as them. You never know. You know, these teams. You, you never know. Look at the Browns. Look, look. No, I mean, yeah, look at what their uh, look at their quarterback uh, yeah. now just gonna missing. That guy's the biggest piece of shit in the world. I, I don't know, know why. A that's horrible one they did over there. Yeah, well, you know that gives us the only reason the Steelers have a chance now because you got to be just shitting me. So right now, as I'm sitting here, a hummingbird just flew by. <laughs> they know, Lisa. Do you think this is a cell phone? But it's not. I'm. Uh, <laughs> Like a Mark, 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 Mark is Mark is, text, is he's texting the hummingbird army. I swear to God, texting I the animal kingdom to uh, come there. over there and pick on Lisa. So did the Browns, um, we're the Browns all frozen guy. Everybody. What? What? I missed something. Did the Browns guy, the quarterback, is he freaking out or something? Oh, he got suspended. For what? I forgot what he did, but he got suspended. Um, the new guy. Yeah, the new guy. Six games? I think it was six or seven games. I forgot his name. Um, shit. Well, did, did they get could, rid of could, the other He couldn't have been suspended for anything as dramatic as, like, beating a person because the NFL I loves forgot that. What, it was just, yeah. in, like, three days ago that he got suspended. Which I'm happy about. I don't care because the only that's the only team that we actually had. Like, it would be – I hate to say it, but the only team that we actually – were a little nervous about because the the Browns came out of nowhere. Like, remember they almost were going to go to the Super Bowl. Oh, Deshaun Watson. Deshaun, thank you. Yeah. Well, and that's because he was kind of wasn't he like accused of beating some woman or something? He beat somebody up, probably. I mean, Sexual that's... assault, misconduct. There, there you, you go. go. Yeah. So then, what happened to what's his name? The other dude. Oh, uh, it, um, uh, Baker Mayfield. He left. Yeah. Oh, he left. Where, where did he go? I don't know right now. He was a good looking dude though, but he's gone. That's not what I asked you. I know. I didn't ask you if you wanted to sleep with him. Right? Uh, I just asked. I just asked what happened to him. You know. I always think of my friend, my friend Mike Nash, and he's like a huge Cleveland fan. So like every time the Steelers play them, I just always text him and just tell him how awful they are. And then like they, they were winning. Like Baker, like Baker Mayfield, such a good quarterback. I was like, shit, like I can't even smack talk because like they're kicking the Steelers ass right now. So I can't even say anything. About it. Well, and you know, the interesting thing about all of this for the five of you that are still listening to the KISS podcast is that how bad must Baker Mayfield be that they're willing to take Deshaun Watson and let him sit for six. Now it's going to be six games. They knew he was going to be um, yep. suspended. I mean, that that tells you like a lot. About the about the Cleveland franchise, that's why they're just doomed all the time. And I don't even think they have a good they have a good backup. Okay, first of all, everyone who's still listening, it's getting close to football season, so this is just normal. Okay, we got to talk and, a little football. And, and by by the way, so, Mark, Mark Mark disappeared, and he just texted us. I lost all internet. Oh no! All internet and cable. Oh shit! So, I want to have storms up there or something. It must be high winds. Hey, coming in. Must be what? High winds. It's an old podcast old. joke. For those of you that have listened so to way, it since the way, way, way back, there used to be a podcast out of Australia that always said that the quality of their show was because it was so windy that the internet connection was bad. All right, so I have two stories to tell because I haven't been on for a while, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bogart the call. So okay. am, I, am I back on? We, yes. we can hear you. We can't see you. But you're on. Please enlighten us, Lisa. Okay. Well, I'll wait. I'll wait till we're Mark, Mark's got Mark's got the old kiss rumor back again. I can see. You gotta call Rob Helford. And it's kiss Ruda. He's got to get you new. <laughs> It's Mark's new 80s new wave band he's rehearsing for us here. Everybody. 
everybody. Come on, what? sing along. Sing along. I'd like to know what song you're singing. <laughs> I don't know either. Good. Read my body. I'm thinking maybe it was the Pornhub theme song. Okay, Lisa, continue. So, oh, there it is. Never lost. <laughs> lost. I think he's doing this oh, deliberately you now. I think he's never lost communication. I think it's Duncan Shane. Right, everybody's frozen. No, we're 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 just fine. <laughs> we're fine. Everybody's frozen. It's a miracle. He's back. Well, I'm not. Of, he's not moving. <laughs> oh, he well, left. All right. So, Lisa, continue on with your story. So, yeah, enlighten us, Lisa. Two stories. James, go in the house, please. James. These are not child appropriate stories. Oh, no, he was there. So we went to this lake house over the weekend. OK, and, and this is just a funny story that like one of those, like, thank God there were no phones out recording. So we went to this lake house over the weekend and uh, yeah, you know what I'm going to say. So, you know, my butt. Yeah. So anyway, my bathing suit strap, my bottom snapped apart and I was getting up out of the kayak and there was a guy on the dock, like an older gentleman. It was it was like a little cove of the lake houses and he was fishing on his dock and his wife was in the house. I got up out of the kayak, the whole bathing suit busts open. All right. Lost the whole bathing suit. Totally we got Bush. We totally, got Bush. Totally Flash the guy across fishing. And everybody else, including my child, saw my butt. Okay. <laughs> and I, you know how Listen, you do like Lisa, it didn't happen unless you can recreate it right here. Oh yeah. my god! You know how you do like you, like you do like one of these like you don't know where to like like touch first. I was mortified, mortified. <laughs> and the guy fishing, so he's looking this way. He's fishing, and this is this was his face for like ten minutes. He would not stop watching, thinking it was going to happen again. It was just... <laughs> Listen, well, if anybody, if anybody got video of that, or if yeah. anybody has access to like satellite cameras, spy cameras uh, for the yeah. NSA, get I, us this footage. I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. I got out of the kayak and I was like bending down to pull the kayak out of the water, and it just went boop. Whole thing went straight down. <laughs> Uh, and but like I said, behind me were all the kids like James and Lily and like our friends that own the lake house. They were all like paddling, boarding and kayaking in from the other side. The guy on the fishing dock, nope, he got the whole full Monty. Lisa, full moon. Now he saw the, he saw the business. The kids? No, James. He saw the frontal. Oh. <laughs> he saw the hand. What did he say? Oh, you know he said it. Yeah. Did he say? Did he say? <laughs> yeah, he did. Oh, he did. Did he, the, did he go to the Harry? <laughs> James, go to the Harry. Please. <laughs> God, I, I love kids. I love oh, That's just the best. God, that's awesome. Wait, they don't know me yet. Oh, they know you all right. Oh, we know you, James. Are you kidding? <laughs> Get in the house, please. Get in the house. Go. Wait, so mom, this no, is... I don't want to talk about it anymore. Go in the house. Okay. Go in the house, please. That is so freaking great. <laughs> it's so angry. It's so angry. I love the war. I love the names kids come up with for stuff. You know, it's fantastic. Close the door. Please get out of here. <laughs> Mark missed it. Oh, God, he really did this time. <laughs> that was my story. I know the name of this episode. It's the hairy episode. The hairy episode. No, I'm laughing. Oh, episode. my God. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> that's that was my story because that's all that embarrassing moment. Like you know, like when you get off a ride and like on a, like a water ride, and you're like, first thing you do before you get up is make sure like everything's still on. Don't and it was no, I don't have that problem. Yes, you do. When you come back 
water slides and like, you know, the body ones where you got to go like this. You know, you get wedgies. You know, you do. All a, 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 a wedgie's not the same as something completely missing. Yeah, and, we don't, and we don't adjust. That's the point. Oh, yeah, that was a lot of adjustment. <laughs> there was, I was like, I, <laughs> I was so <laughs> Maybe you should. Maybe. You, <laughs> that, the guy's face was classic. And, and as I'm like trying to cover, he's still, he's like this. Maybe you should consider a one piece. No, I can't wear those. That's what Brian said. I can't wear those. No. So then there's, there's associated risk. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you should just go to a nudist resort and get rid of the problem altogether. There you go. And then, then the late, there was another couple with us. So there was uh, Brian's in, in Florida. So it was just me and the kids and then another couple and their kids. And oh, the Brian with- missed all of this, huh? Oh my God. I had a call. I was like, dude, I totally flashed the guy. He's like, like you did? Like, yes, my bathing suit bottom come off like completely. He's like, oh, my God, did he see like your butt? I'm like, no. It's all the hairy. <laughs> it's all the hairy. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. I'm so embarrassed. I can't. Oh, my That's God. Awesome. I love it. You, hey, you you told us a story with with James outside. Again, be. associated risk here, you know. God. James. That's funny as hell. Yeah, well, that's the- always. Oh my god! So, anyways, didn't, didn't you say you had two stories to tell? Oh yeah, my second story was just about how amazing John Five is. That was my second story. Yeah, I saw him a couple of weeks ago. He is he's unbelievable. I John just- Five is so uh, cool. So, I he came into he played in Atlanta. Well, he played 15 minutes from my house, which never no one ever comes. Like, there's an amphitheater near my house. No one ever goes there. Every time when people come in, I have to drive to the airport, which is a shit show, and. Every time when Bruce plays, I tell him, I'm like, Bruce, it takes me like, it could take me two hours to get there. He's like, no. So then when I, he played the last time, he Googled my address to, he's like, oh yeah, that is far. I'm like, I, well, yeah, I think I just left late. Like, yeah, it's a pain in the ass. But anyway, I always go, I don't care. I'll, I could, I'll travel four hours to go see BK. Anyway, so um, when I went to go see John, it was right like in my backyard. So and it's a thousand degrees here. It is so hot. I don't know how it is in your neck of the woods, but it is hotter than hell here. Right? Did you flash him too? No, no, thank God no. But, you know, I try to look nice. You know, I have a cute little outfit on. I know it's going to be hot. So I have a nice outfit on. I have my hair nice, put my makeup on. By the time I walked from my car to the front of that venue, I was sweating like a pig. There was sweat dripping down my back of my neck. I looked disgusting. Okay? Like a hairy pig? Like a hairy pig. Just... <laughs> so I'm thinking, well, maybe I'll just talk to him after the show. Because I'm like, God, Never I hope. Never going to go away. I'm like, I know. I go, I hope he doesn't. I hope he's like, doesn't see me now because I look horrendous. Okay. Like horrendous. So he calls me. He's like, where are you? And I said, I'm in the venue. All right. So. Now, after I just walked 20 minutes from my car to the thing, I didn't know he wanted us to talk at the beginning of the show. I was a mess. And he's like all nice and fresh looking. I'm like, oh, my God. I go, how come you're not like looking like me right now? Like I'm I'm sweating and everywhere. He's like, oh, I don't sweat. I'm like, wow. I'm like, I'm sorry I look so horrible. But anyway, he is the nicest guy. You know how you have your like your 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 people that you know that like you could rank as like the nicest people on the planet that you meet. Like I I put I put Bruce in that category. I put Alice Cooper in that category. Um, and you know I put like some Kiss member. Like you know what I'm saying. But oh, when you watch I mean, John, yeah. And when you watch John, and I never met him before until I met him um, when he opened up for Queen Drake right before the pandemic. And I, I told, I think I told that story where um, I, I never met him before. I really didn't really know any much about him. I went with my friend who um, had to talk with um, the guy from Queen Drake and John about something or had something for John. So I went backstage with him and I, I want to get a picture with him because after I watched, it, I was like, hey, he's pretty fucking cool. So as I'm getting a picture with him, I go, how come he never came on our podcast? And immediately he was like, oh my God, are you Lisa Martini from Three Sides of the Quint? And and it was like, he could not wait to talk to me just because mm-hmm. he had to talk to Kiss about. So mm-hmm. I, that guy is so incredibly cool, you know? 
Um, and, and I went to go see him in May. He did the John five and the creatures, which was awesome. And we stuck around and hung out a little bit after that. Um, but I just, you know, for anybody out there who, who has never seen him or doesn't know anything about him, please go see him play. Because not only is he probably one of the most, most phenomenal guitar players that I've ever seen, but he is the nicest person on the planet. I, I can't. I cannot say enough about him. Just mm-hmm. he's nice and so soft spoken and so polite and so sweet. And then you watch him on stage and it's like he it's like he puts that it's like with Kiss, they put that war paint on and yep. they become and a so, character. Yep. Yeah. And when he puts that, like he said, I have to go get I have to go get ready now, you know, and and then he comes out on stage and he's like, I'm like amazing. And then I saw him after the show and he's still in his makeup and his whole outfit. And he's like, did you have a good time? And I'm like, oh, my God, like, this is unbelievable. So yeah, it's I'm- funny because he thinks that I don't like his music, which is so not true. I, I could listen to him play all day. It's all for most of you. It's it's instrumental for the most part. That's, oh. that's all it is. But it's so unique because it's not just like it's not like a Vinnie Vincent solo. It's no, so it's, much better. It's melodic. It's- yeah, it's melodic and it and it's all types of genres of music. So even though there's a heavier side to some of the songs, there's some stuff you could definitely go, oh my God, you know he watches Hee Haw because he loves Roy Clark. He chicken picks. Oh, I agree. I yeah. mean, who, who does that? He chicken picks and then, like does that into like this amazing heavy metal. See, I love Joe Satriani too. All right. Yeah. So Joe Satriani and Steve Vai were like like those melodic instrumental guitar players of like the 80s okay and and eric johnson and those kind he has now like taken all of that and made it into something completely different he Mm -hmm. it's not it's just it's so melodic and so amazing i was completely blown away and this goes to show everybody again how take that chance and go see something because you'll never know you know as when i was talking to him before the rob zombie show I am not a big fan of that Static X and that Power Man 5000. I, I, I can't. I just can't. I tried and I can't. I can't do it. It's just, it's a, such a bunch of screaming and noise to me. I can't. I can't. Um, and he said to me, because you're going to love Rob Zombie. Trust me. I'm like, okay. When afterwards, I told him I saw so much nuances of Kiss and Alice Cooper yeah. in that. Mm-hmm. If you go to the show, you see, so with, with the KISS references, you see like the balloons, they throw out the balloons during the show. And with the Alice Cooper references, they have the big monsters that come out and they also have bubbles. Yep. With Alice Cooper back in the day used to use bubbles during the show. So I think that was really cool that they use those, um, that they, they put in those little nuances of the bands that influenced them. So I really recommend going to see it. I had a wonderful time. Again, you know, I'm glad I went. Uh, again, not a big fan of that Static X. I don't know what the hell that guy was singing. All I heard was, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I don't know what was going on. So they weren't with Mudvayne? It was Mudvayne, Power Man 5000, and Static X. Oh. And then now I, I got there late as I was walking in a thousand degrees through the parking lot. Um, and and then I th- I don't forget who played first, but that's the band that was on. And then there was a little break, and then I was talked to John, and then I came back out, and there was a little VIP lounge, um, on the side. And I I kindly asked this lady, and I said, "Can I please sit back there?" It's like a you can pay for it. It's you know if you want. I said, "Can I please just sit back there?" And by sitting back there, you sit in this air conditioned room, and I didn't have to hear the rigmarole. That was, I watched it on TV, but I didn't have to listen to it. It was, just, it's just not my cup of tea. And I apologize to those who like it. I just, I cannot muster it. I just can't. It's okay. I mean, that's what music is all about is it's just opinion. You like what you like. There's no right or wrong answer but, to any of that. No, but you know? Rob's only put on one hell of a show. He really does. The whole band is phenomenal. And to Lisa's point, get out there and see and support John when he's doing his solo stuff too, because if he's around and you run into him, he'll talk with kiss with you. He will. Oh, he, because he doesn't have anyone. Like he told me, I don't really have a lot of people to talk kiss with. So, you know, you know, when we went back, when I talked to him the other night, we talked about uh, creatures fast. We talked about, 
you know, um, his birthday was Sunday. So mm-hmm. we talked at, you know, just stuff like that. And, but- and then if you haven't seen it, people, there's a, there's a great video clip out on YouTube of Peter Chris coming out and singing happy birthday to John at the Rob Zombie show. Oh, he, always, he plays out with Rob for some reason. They always happen to play in New Jersey around his birthday. So every time when he goes to Jersey and plays on his birthday, Peter Chris always comes out with Gigi. He said it's such a thrill for him because he is a huge kiss fan. Mm-hmm. And when you, when you talk to him, you know, you look at him and you're like, Holy shit, that's John five. But then when you talk to him, it's like you're talking just to another kiss, per- like a kiss fan. Mm-hmm. You know, I kind of get some time that he's John five and I'm just like, Oh my God, did you see this kick-ass video? And did you see, you know, he's like, he's, he's such a, I don't want to say normal because that's such a, no, he's a dark like us. Yes. Uh, yeah, yes. That's it. yeah. Yeah. I think I told the story that time that, that he was coming here to town and, and we were talking. He's like, I want you to come down. I want you to shoot the whole show because I want some photos for a potential new release. He was doing a live album. I said, of course, you know, I was going to come down anyways. So after the show, we go down to his dressing room and we're sitting there talking and his manager comes and he's like, there's this guy out here that says he has a kiss couch for sale and <laughs> wants to sell it. And John's like, I don't, there's no kiss. I know, you know, and I said, that's Will. I said, that's the guy who thinks there's a dick on the back of the Love Gun album cover. And John's like, oh, I want to meet him. (laughs) So (laughs) we go up to his meet and greet and he's, you know, talking with his fans and taking pictures. And I introduced him to Will, right? So he's like, well, come on let's talk so we're all going back to the to his dressing room will's walking with john five he's like i don't know if you know me but i'm the guy that thinks there's a dick on the back of the love gun album cover john's like oh wow really why do you think that (laughs) (laughs) this whole big thing and and he has a kiss couch for sale he has one of the couches that they used in that movie they did uh phantom of the park the 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 one with the the wraparound looks like snakes yeah yeah will Will has one of those huh does that from the movie set or is it just like something he found? No, it's from the movie set. How did that he get that? Yeah, exactly. I don't, you know, cause he was out in New York at the time and I don't know. He knew someone in LA who had it. I, you'd have to ask him. Oh. The story. No, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want. Well, did no, John I know, have, I know. does John have the couch now? No, I don't believe so. Okay. Cause it, I think it ended up being just too big. He couldn't fit it. You know, into his. Well, how many kids fit in this house? Yeah, you know. But anyway, so, I mean, besides, God knows what Will did on that couch. Yeah, I know. Knowing Will, probably nothing. He probably kept it wrapped up in a box. Like Mark, he just kept it wrapped. He yeah. Did not wrap it. yeah. Yeah. No, Mark. Mark. Mark would have a couch, but it would be covered in plastic, like your grandma used to do. Yeah, like yeah, like <laughs> grandma. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But anyway, that was my story about John five. I just cannot, you know, again, I just cannot express enough. And not only is he such an amazing guitar player, but the most down to earth human being that I've ever met. So uh, again, if you have a chance and he's playing in your neck of the woods and after Rob Zombie, uh, in fact, they're playing in Pittsburgh tonight, which is, which is coincidental, uh, my hometown, but, um, he, uh, you know, go check. He's going to do some more dates with John five and the creatures. So please go out and see him. Uh, you will be completely blown away. And he throws in a couple kiss riffs in there. I mean, he always, uh, you know, always pays homage to his favorite band. So, uh, you know, please go. It's he, he's such, he's so amazing. All right. That's it. That's my shameless John five. Book. And if I'll be in Chicago on uh, June 14th to the 18th. So if anyone's in Chicago, I'm going for a conference. Are you going to be hanging out on any of the lakes? No, I'm staying and da- I'm, I'm staying on. Mi- well, shut up. No, <laughs> I got you now. Figure it out. No. The bathing awesome. suit is now secure. Okay. My friend went to school for engineering and we. we engineering. You know what's funny? No, here's what's funny. I went, oh my God. So my friend after the first. So it actually broke in two places. But the first time it broke, I was, I was putting it on. All right. So I was still in the bathroom putting it on. So that was the first time it broke. So I came out and I said, does anybody have a safety pin? And my friends, uh, my friend, Brian said, you know, oh, why did your bathing suit break? And I said, yeah. And he goes, oh, let me see. 
And he's like, oh, just put a hole right here. And then you can just kind of loop this, the, the, stra- the string through. I was like, oh, I didn't even think about that. And I went, would you go for school for engineering? I was like pretty quick. He's like, yeah, I'm like, oh, shit. So then the second time it broke, I knew what to do. I had a, you know, when you're panicking, Tommy, and your bathing suit's fucking falling off. I don't have time to think about, oh, I should have put a hole here. And one, two, three. I'm like, anybody got a safety pin or a thread and needle? Everyone you else know? is thinking we've got Bush. Yeah, exactly. We've, we've got, got Harry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you said that. I'm so oh, mad. I, I can't. That's that's a that's a top tenner right there. That that is that that, that that is a well, kid. You know what? He just had health class. You know, the end of fifth grade where they talk about all that stuff. So I'm sure he saw stuff. God, I'm so embarrassed. It's fucking funny though, but yeah, I'm really it is hilarious. <laughs> I'll be like, I'll come. Like I said, Brian's not. Brian's out of town. I'll be like, Brian, you might want to talk to James. You know, it's time to have the talk. It's yeah, you to, need to. Have it's time to have that hairy talk. Yeah, God. mortified. <laughs> Don't use me as any examples, though. <laughs> yeah, geez, wait. What's Lily doing? She cleaned up garbage. You know what? It's actually. It, I've been alone for two days now. No husband. No kids. Nothing. So it's kind of a mess. A little bit, not really, but yeah, a little bit. Like, I just I bowled last night, and then, hey, I bowled last night, and I went to bed, and I got up, went to work. It's like nothing exciting, but it's like, do I really want to put that cup in the dishwasher? No, not really. <laughs> Why would yeah. you? Yeah, I know. It's like I'll stay there. Too. All right, all right. So, so that's all I got. I'm is sorry. that it for today? So, 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 there Tommy, let. Let, let's Zero read some kiss related. So you guys got to talk kiss. Now. Let's let's I'm read sorry. some kiss comments off of our new uh, Casey kite fly episode. All right. Um, there's several actually. And some of you guys are so kind in commenting every week. And I wish I could read them every week, but I think it's important to also, you know, branch out a little bit. Um, Jay blues said, what a treasure this was. Nowhere else do you hear these types of stories from the beginnings of KISS. Thanks to you for all of the great resource. Now subscribe to River Docs, which I don't know what that is. That, that, that's the YouTube channel of our guest, Doc Rivers. Oh, wonderful. Okay, there you go. Perfect. And then uh, John XD, my dad was at that show. When I asked him what it was like, he said he was tripping balls and he didn't even remember who played. My jaw hit the floor. Can you imagine being at such a historic and amazing show and you were so high that you missed it? Don't do drugs, kids. Kind kind of sounds like what Doc said. He's like, you know, we were there and we were just kind of out of it. Yeah, I guess I just didn't catch it at first when I read it. I'm like, River Docs, River, because I was thinking documents. So there you go. Um, Thank you, guys. So I want to make a quick mention. Actually, we're going to make this mention a lot moving forward. Three Sides of the Coin Radio is back. Woohoo! You know, we, we've had, this is our third attempt at radio. Um, we are now available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year on any Amazon Alexa device or the free Alexa app that you can install on your smartphones and tablets. So, so Michael, what are those Alexa devices? I know it's the, it's the, um, oh, there's, there's, there, there actually if you go to three sides of the coin radio.com, it's a page okay. I built on our website. It lists all of the devices. It's like, okay, good. Uh, you know, the, the, the regular Alexa speakers, the Alexa video devices, the Alexa what fire TVs, the fire TV sticks, anything that's got Alexa huh? built so into how it. Do you do, how do you do it on the fire stick? Um, you just have you, to pick in and do that. Yeah, you just the the okay. and and I've got one. I got a device in my room here, so if I say this, it might start. But all you got to do is say Alexa, launch three sides of the coin radio. That's it. 
Oh, I thought I was going to launch. I don't know what it's doing back there. Um, I think could, it's thinking or listening, but that that's it. Also just so, use the word Harry. Yeah. yeah. And it will launch. <laughs> launch Harry's radio. <laughs> um, we are getting questions because not everybody has purchased an Amazon device. Although God knows there's, they're everywhere out there. They're built into everything. My wife's there. bought them for everybody else who has them. Jesus. But you can install the Alexa app for free on your smartphone and your okay. tablet. And then you can just listen to it through the app uh, using the same commands. Launch three sides awesome. of the coin radio. Um, we have, again, it's available worldwide, 24 hours a day. It's not... You know, we used to be just on weekends and whatever. It's nothing but music, nothing but kiss music. There's none of us talking over it. There's no DJs. Um, give it a listen anytime you want some kiss music. Once again, though, we will not play rock and roll all night. Okay. Because that's no, what you can hear on every freaking radio station on the yeah. planet. And everybody that's going to be doing a playlist for us gets to pick what they love. So every section is going to be different. You'll never know what you're going to hear. It makes it a lot more fun. And you're going to hear some songs that I promise you, you probably haven't heard in years that are going to be like, oh, gosh, I forgot about that one. Well, and, and to Tommy's point about playlists, we've already reached out to a number of guests to provide us with their KISS playlist of songs they want to hear musicians people in the kiss family um we should they, even probably run some kind of a thing to let one listener do well it. i was thinking we would probably do that as well at mm -hmm. some point we'll open it up and and just our regular listeners and fans can submit playlists and we'll put them up on the on the radio station and you can listen to all the kiss tunes you picked um, I think the playlist right now is like 47 songs. God knows. I mean, it would take you a few hours to sit there and just listen to it. Um, but three sides of the coin radio is back anytime, anywhere. Give it a listen. It's on all the Amazon devices. Three sides of the coin radio.com is where you can find all the devices it's available on. The voice commands, because you can skip songs, you can go back and listen to songs, um, you know, anything that Amazon lets you do. Look at look at Lisa. Waiter, waiter. She's, I'm not, getting it. She's not getting it for me. <laughs> Being an How? Oh, you know, I had these children. For a for reason. Fun. Yeah. Oh, to bring gosh. beer. To bring beer. Really? To clean up stuff. Yeah, clean out the rabbit. The dishwasher. You don't bring me in. I bring you a lot of stuff. Mm. <laughs> I brought you into this world. I can take, I can you, take out. you out. That's right. Oh. <laughs> that is that was, the best perfect. line. That was so perfect, too. Because yep. she says, you don't bring me anything. Oh, my God, that was so perfect. I brought you into this world, and I'll take you out. <laughs> oh, she just put her head in a spider web. Oh, my God. Yep. Yeah, they don't do anything anymore. I do everything. Lily, that do you have I the do Alexa? everything. I love that from kids. I do everything in this house. Do you have the Alexa do dad up in your room? It's called your Alexa. And Why I don't do. you go up there and, and do Alexa launch three sides of the coin uh, radio? I'm not doing that. And see if it works. <laughs> I'm not doing that. And you uh, listen to Kiss. I'm listening to the music. I don't want to listen to Kiss. Oh, that's sacrilegious. Whoa. Wait, what? Get the cat foot out of here. Just the eel oh, face. Jesus. <laughs> All right, I gotta open this up. Okay. All right, go get me a beer. I'm you a beer, Mom. I have to Please, I know you love me. Oh, uh, well. Just give me the, the damn beer. I'll do it later. I'll do it. Give me the damn beer. <laughs> God, I'll be, I'll just like, I'll be, uh, like, thirsting. All right, all right. So listen, listen to our radio station. Anytime you want, anywhere, any hour of the day. We'll be updating the playlist periodically here with guests and Lisa will have one and Mark will have one and Tommy will have one. But listen, it's nothing but kiss music. 
and it's not the kiss it's not the kiss songs you hear on every radio station there's like five songs rock and roll all night love gun shout it out loud yeah Mm -mm. now can we throw in like some union can we throw in some you know anything anything that's that's got a kiss connection to it it the this first playlist doesn't go super deep but like all these guests that are going to be providing us with playlists, it's anything that has a KISS connection. It could be a band that opened for KISS. It could be a band that, a song that Paul Stanley co-wrote or, you know, sang background vocal. I don't care. Yeah. Any KISS wow. connection to the song. I just think that's cool because then it also um, gives you the opportunity to sample something new. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know? You know? Yeah, or something you haven't heard in a while. Right. Exactly. Exactly. We should have Izzy Presley do one too. I, I he's actually on my list, and Good. and and Ralph. And Ralph, of course, Ralph. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So, do we actually well, want to get into a topic discussion, or should we just say screw it and? What, what's there to talk about? I suppose we could talk about the Kiss is still going to continue to tour. I'm very excited they, about they that. Really, they- he said any dates yet or cities, right? Well, no, they, but- they, they just they just announced a return to Tokyo, Japan at the end of November, right? End of November. So, I mean, he, I mean, here's the, here. We don't need to get into a super deep discussion. And as I say, that we will probably end up talking for two hours. But we mentioned briefly last week or a week before Kiss announced or Gene announced Um. Kiss will do a hundred additional dates. Didn't specify when, where, or anything, but a hundred more dates. Um, they they have now announced a return to Tokyo, Japan. That's cool. They, they've already played Tokyo, Japan. So, you know, to Tommy's I point, what they're going to do with that. I mean, hmm? There's got to be something behind that, like like a like a film. Like they're going to film it or something. Like I, feel like I think the, I, Lisa, I think the only thing behind it is a promoter said, we can probably sell it out. We'll pay you. Come back. That's it. And they had such a great run in Europe. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. European leg, you know, the, 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 the word is that, that they are returning to Europe. This isn't official. We don't, we haven't heard this. I'm just picking this up off of comments that people have been making during the European tour when they've talked to people amongst the band and the crew, but yes, they'll be returning to Europe. I'm assuming there's going to be U S States. I mean, a hundred dates is a lot of dates. So um, they did that's versus Europe. They just said a hundred dates, right? A hundred more dates. Yep. Okay. It'd be more nice dates. in the U S if they started to do those B markets, if that's what you want to call them, you know, like, like it- a- like a Mankato, Minnesota, or yeah, the, the, Cedar yeah, Rapids, like Iowa. The, the, the Lost Cities type of stuff. Yeah, the Lost City, because I love that. I mean, it's, 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 it's awesome that there's still interest and people want Kiss to come back and play. And if you get an opportunity, great, you're going to be able to see them again. But is this turning into the Farewell Tour Part 2 that all of a sudden isn't the Farewell that's exactly what I was just thinking too. It's like, like I, I thought it was like the end end. Not that I don't care, but you know. You, you know, I mean, we we know that when this whole thing started, pre COVID, there was an end date of July 2021, like last year. A year ago would have been their last show, and Kiss would have been done touring as we're speaking now. COVID changed all of that. I mean, the whole tour has been delayed couple years um and compounding that it pushes it up to the band's 50th anniversary next year's the band's 50th anniversary how can how can you honestly not expect them to acknowledge 50 years i mean it's very rare that any band ever makes it that far that's why I was surprised they were going to end it before that anyway. So for me, if we're going to get a hundred more shows, that gives me another half a dozen chances to see them. I'm going to go as often as I can. I just, again, I, and, and I got no problems if people want to go see it. I don't have problems if people say I've had enough. I'm yeah. just wondering if this is going to turn into the, Oh, 
it's not really a farewell tour anymore, is it? You're going to continue to keep playing. You're going back to the cities. You've already played. You already played Tokyo. You're going back to Tokyo. Yeah, but so it wasn't. It wasn't the last time. I mean, yeah. You know, keep in mind all these people in Europe this summer were going because this is they it. thought they this it. was it. But you know, Elton John's doing the exact same thing. Oh, it, listen, everybody's done it. Yeah, it, it's you know because he's been he has the Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, which is his last tour. He's been to St. Paul four times. I know. I mean, I guess I, I just I don't go to see a band because it's the last time I'm going to see them. I go because I want to go see them. So I'm I'm not as affected by that rhetoric because. But, you but know. I, what what I'm wondering is, you know, was like part of it like, oh my god, look at how amazing the shows are selling out in Europe. Let's come back. Well, they were selling out because people thought it was the last time. Right. If you come back next year, will they sell out just as they did? same as they did or are people going to be like oh, I, I saw it i saw it i don't need to go i think there's if they're smart they will because they'll be strategic about playing different cities that they didn't play this time other than maybe some of the large festivals so again going back to that lost cities idea playing places like don't you've been to milwaukee twice now don't go back to milwaukee you've been to minneapolis you've been to st paul but you haven't been, like I said, to Mankato or to Duluth or to Rochester. You haven't been to Cedar Rapids, Iowa. You haven't been to Lincoln, Nebraska. You yeah, but it kind of comes down to where the promoters are ponying up the money. But right. it, the, the promoters, if they think they can sell it out, they're going to keep ponying up the well, money. I know that that's the whole thing. The promoters yeah. obviously feel like, we yeah, can make we'll, money. We'll, we'll bring you back to Tokyo. Even though the last time was supposedly your last show. Yeah, we'll, we'll pay you to come back because you did so well. Uh, you know, it'll just be interesting to see how these hundred dates eventually play out and what the reception is. Will it be billed as the end of the road tour or does it somehow become the 50th, 50th anniversary. anniversary tour? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it opens up a lot of a lot of questions. You know, one couple things I've always learned about Kiss. Anything's possible. So never say never. Mm -hmm. and they play by their own rules they literally do not care what society and fans and everybody else expects the right way to do it they're going to do what they want and i love that about them yep. um it's just going to be interesting you know i joked last week you know the end of the road tour is we found more road tour now i mean mm -hmm. but is that going to become a bigger a bigger issue in the music community, not just amongst KISS fans, because listen, we all know KISS fans are going to bitch about something, regardless of whether it's worth bitching yep. about. So when when you start going into the regular music media and, and radio and other press, do they start going, oh, well, so much for that farewell tour. This is, they're not ending. Good question. It's hard to know. I mean, maybe a lot of them are so apathetic at this point, this type of stuff doesn't even register for them because I saw something on the New York Post today where Gene was, like, I think it was just a blurb, and he said something like 100 more cities mm -hmm. or 100 more shows. And so I, I read it quickly, but it didn't seem like there was a negative backlash to it. It was more like reporting what is transpiring. I saw it on iHeartRadio thing too. Yeah. He did, which just mentioned that, you know, they're going to do another hundred shows. Which is, I mean, it's, 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 it's kind of one of those things where it's a good problem to have that there's still so much demand that somebody says, uh, we don't want you to end this tour. We want you to play another hundred dates. It's a good problem. Yeah. Because there's a lot of bands that wish that they had that situation. Totally. I mean, there are bands that are national touring acts with hits that can't pull more than a thousand people, if that, to a show. Yep. And you've got a monster like Kiss being able to go out and come back again. So what if they play uh, B market places where the uh, most ticket sales is 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, whatever, that, that's still a lot of people showing up to see a show. I think that would be cool. 
to yeah, do that. I, I love the I love Peoria and and in those types of, of places because sometimes some of the best shows I see are in those markets. Like smaller shows, more intimate. They don't have to have a full, you know, a full blown stage show. You know, I mean, of course they'll have pyro and whatever, but you know, just to see them in a more intimate setting would be really cool. Well, it seems like there's less people there that are. I don't know how to say this. More people that show up to these smaller shows are fans or music fans that really want to come to the show. So it seems like there's a more of a palpable excitement there than sometimes when you go to some of the really large cities where there's a certain amount of people that are there that are just there because, hey, let's go. It's it the cool like, event in town and we want to be seen there. It, it, yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe smaller shows, they'll pull it, put in some some deeper cuts. I mean, obviously, we know we can't go too deep, but maybe they'll throw in. Well, you know. l- let me let me ask you guys this. Now that we know next year is their 50th anniversary, they've added 100 more dates. So they're going to be touring into and probably through next year. Um would you want this tour to continue as the end of the road tour or would you rather them change it to the 50th anniversary celebration tour? I don't know. I don't think it really matters, but I think it's weird to go from end of the road to changing it to another. I think it'll be a hybrid. It'll be the (laughs) end of the road 50. anniversary tour it's gonna say let's yeah. just put them together, it together. You, can't, you can't go from end of the road it's like farewell tour to this to this to this oh now it's the end of the well road. you know at least to what you i can't... just said kiss anything's possible with these guys and they play by their own rules so they may sit here and go well yeah you know we can make a lot more money rebranding a whole new tour and selling all new merchandise and tour books all over again if we just That's call it I, the 50th smart. anniversary now I think I'm sure that's cool. what they'll do. I think it would be cool to like to, to co-brand it and then have like super special 50th anniversary merchandise. So keep the end of the road merchandise, like the tour books and stuff, but then make special 50th anniversary shirts. The thing I liked about um, like when they did the, I forget what show it was. Um, I forget what, what show was it where they had um Maybe it was the end of the road. Who knows? They had shirts made up for each city. Now, I don't think they did it for end of the road. I think the only one they did that for was New York. But they used to have. Since well, the, the Natty. The, 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 re, the reunion tour, they used to do that. Yeah. It was a Kiss Rocked, like for Pittsburgh. Kiss Rocked Pittsburgh. I was, I was there type of shirt. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And really cool. So like something like that, like, you know, the farewell tour 50th anniversary celebration rock and such i would like to there you know yeah and and i would love to see them take that 10th anniversary tank that was on the front of their tour book and incorporate that into the 50th anniversary and then just change the stage enough to build the tank treads and the turret on it keep all the the rest of it the same you want the tank back on Mm -hmm. see i think well if they incorporated elements of the state i know this is so stupid but incorporated elements of all the stages through all their career well we that we talked we talked about that for the end of the road tour you know yeah we we talked about how how that how that would be cool for the end of the road tour to incorporate yeah elements of their entire career right right like maybe have a little bit maybe not you know um, the revenge tour with the statue of liberty or the sphinx you know maybe not like to the extent of the the you know, the whole entire stage like that, but little pieces of it, some were represented without it looking like a big hot mess. Well, I loved how they added the cats. So I would, I would be totally up for more of that type of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Like that. Then maybe a do destroyer type stage or where you have, they have their separate areas or something that incorporates more of it. I'd like to see it change a little bit. Now the argument would be, why would we change it when there's still a lot of people who haven't seen it? Well, you've gone around the world now, so yeah. let's let's mix her up a little bit. But I just thought the tank tour thing would be really cool because it would still work with the pods and everything that they else they have incorporated. I don't know. You don't know anything. I don't know shit. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
he's like, I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, that's our kiss discussion. So you can't yell at us that we didn't talk about kiss. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We, we talked right. about we talked about John five and we read some comments and talked about our radio and we talked about end of the road continuing. So there you go. We talked to Cass. It was it was a very hairy episode. It was hairy. We didn't get almost didn't get through this hairy episode. <laughs> I, I got to share stories. I mean, geez, the yeah. it's funny. I, I, OK, homework question. Do we have a graphic designer out there that can make the Harry episode T-shirt for us? I don't know what it would be. It's got to be clean, people. Yeah. Oh. So maybe you could do a drawing. Is it like landing strip? Is it a heart? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's awful. Honey. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, you knew this was going to happen if you told this story yeah. on the show. Say, Harry, geez, Louise, that was not, I didn't. I didn't go into detail. No, I but did. you only know that when the listeners see you out in public. Now they're going to Dude, Lisa. You know, be, right. be be happy that Mark's router acted up. If Mark was here through all of this, oi, Vay, could you imagine? <laughs> he'd, be, he'd be diddling himself. It, it, it'd be, he'd be having a grabber. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming home. <laughs> that's wrong i just had to share this stuff i mean oh, oh no that's great i mean that's what the show is we're open and share everything in our Lisa. lives yeah we're good and the thing is when you have kids you uh-huh. you know as well as i do lisa they young kids nice. like that you can't control when they show up and what they say when they show up no and he was not out here at all until he pops out here right when I'm ready to start the story and plays with the cat. And mm-hmm. then he got go in the house now. Just take the cat with you, please. So embarrassed. Mommy, did they see your boobs? No. They saw Harry? <laughs> they saw Harry. <laughs> well, good thing for you, Lisa. No one listens to this, so you should be okay. <laughs> uh, uh. No one be embarrassed when they see me on public. You know? Well, the next PTA meeting is going to be a joy. Yeah. Yeah. It's already bad. I had to go serve. I had to volunteer at Lily's band camp thing and serve like they had dinner for them last week. Every day I show up in this coffee house tank top and all the other moms are like in their like cute little outfits. I'm like, listen, I'm just serving pasta here. I'm not here for a fashion show. I'm going to tell you, you know, no, one, I don't think anybody really liked me, but it's, it's like, start- little, I'm like, you have a cool mom. Okay. I'm just saying. You, you're like, listen, this one all time the, of camp. all the moms here, raise your hand if you've got a podcast that's been listened to nearly 8 million times. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm the celebrity. Yeah. yeah. Eat my fucking big ZD, bitches. <laughs> Eat my fucking big ZD. What I mean. Oh, my God. Lisa is just cracking She's it. on fire today. What's wrong with me today? Maybe I had a lot of angst build up. Oh, you need another beer. I, well, obviously, I didn't get one. I know. What good are kids? Obviously, I they did. I did not do well. So I, there you go. All right. So so, so 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 homework, people. Uh, let us know what you think of Three Sides of the Coin Radio. Yes. Um, have you ever met John Five? What do you think of him? Um, what do you think of the continuing of the End of the Road tour into the 50th yeah. anniversary? You know, whatever we talked about, do you have opinions on that? God and knows you're going to have Or drawings. Or drawings <laughs> of artwork that we can use for the big ZD, the big hairy ZD. <laughs> or is it just like, she just like snorted. The Black, or is it just like the Black Crows album, Amorica? Oh, God. Yes. No, 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 no. That's never going to happen. No. That's no. <laughs> I can't believe Mark's missing this one. This has been like, his, this would have been his dream episode. Yeah, it's really. Bad it's what it's like when you have stuff, internet and technology issues. I feel bad for him. A little Some bit. Of it's self-induced though, really. I mean, all kidding aside. He no, but he's been doing technology lately. 
I mean, he's been doing of, pretty good. Yeah. 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 Yes. Like, yeah. It's just, you know, under circumstances. So uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, yeah, that's it. You know what your homework is. Three sides of the coin radio.com people listen, listen, listen. And, um, yeah, we're done. We're out of here. We'll see you next week. We got some guests coming in, so don't worry. Won't you just be to- us. Yeah, sorry. Do you have something to say? Leave a voicemail or send us a text message. Call 320-515-4771. Visit threesidesofthecoin.com. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow and rate us on Spotify. Subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We appreciate your support. Voices for Three Sides of the Coin, provided by LarryDavisVoice.com and by JessicaMarsVoice.com. That's Mars with a Z.